We're going to talk over together many things, right? Yes, sir. From childhood to now, and what you're going to do in the future. So we'll begin with your background. You're French. You're from Indonesia. Philippines, sir. Philippines. You're from India. Argentina. Argentina. So, four different nationalities, four different backgrounds, four different conditioning. Right? Mm. So, shall we begin by asking, I'm going to ask you, if I may, what was your father and mother like? How did they treat you? As a toy, when you were a baby and a child, or did they treat you with a great deal, or, and they might have treated you with a great deal of affection, care? What's your background? Because after all, that background does condition your thinking, partly, and also. It shapes your way of life. And so you gradually fall into a certain pattern. So we're going to begin to talk over it together, if you will. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind. What was your childhood like? And what were your parents like, if you can remember? I personally can't remember a thing about my youth, little bit, very vaguely, my childhood, my mother, father. I, I can't see them, what they were looking like. But my thing is different, so I would like to ask you, begin with India? Or would you like to begin with you? No, it's all right. Begin with Sarah. Say, no communion. It's all right. What were your parents like? Should I begin right from the beginning? Yes. As far as I can remember? Or huh? As far as I can remember? Or That's it. As far as, of course. You can't remember when you were born. <laughs> the second you were born. <laughs> mm. I'd, I'd like to think that I had a, had a happy childhood. Not like to think, well, but actually. That's why, <laughs> let's, let's understand each other right from the beginning. It's better to deal with facts as they are, mm -hmm. right? Not imagine, romanticize, hope, hmm? or say, I thought it was like that, but actually, factually. So that we can go from fact to fact, you follow? Not bring any kind of imagination, or fantasies and so on. Would that be all that? Of course. Right? It's difficult though. <laughs> yeah. It's difficult because we're talking about memories, about the past, and I always get, get mixed up. I mean, I'm not sure how it really was. No. Just not how you, you can't remember. Well, I think mine is quite a simple case, sir, so I don't mind start with myself. Uh, although I live in the Philippines now, I was actually born in Hong Kong. And as far as I remember, I remember nothing before what happened when I was in Hong Kong. When, how old were you? Uh, when I was in Hong Kong? Uh, I was there for eight years, for the first eight years of my life. So, what was your eight years like, if you can remember it? With your father, your natural? No, my father was in the Philippines. Then you lived with your mother? Yes, and my brothers and my sisters. Brothers sister. in Hong Kong? Yes. Then what was, what was your relationship to your mother, to your other brothers and sisters, and what were you feeling like? What did they, how did your mother treat you? Get your background clear. You follow what I mean? Yes. 
I she she wasn't working then. Yeah. Uh, well, at one time she had to do some work, but not much. So her main job was to look after us. So what what was your relationship to her and her relationship to you? Well, as a mother to a child. What? As a mother, she um, we were very well looked after by her, and. As far as I remember, I was very happy with her and with my brothers. Was she merely looking after you? Or was there a great deal of affection, care, responsibility? You follow? As a mother, mothers are always much more important than fathers. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> right? Because they, especially in India, they look after you. Hmm? Mothers are the last people to eat, right? In my case, sir, my father looked after me for a long time. A little bit louder, please. In my case, my father looked after me for a long time. With you? Absent? Yes. No, he, he looked after me. My not father. your mother? Both. Both. <laughs> no, you're not answering my question quite, if I may repeat again. Unless you're very clear what your background is, mm -hmm. from childhood, as far as you can remember, naturally. Mm -hmm. That background, that conditioning, or that, what the past from the beginning, of your, if you, when you can remember, shapes one's mind gradually, mm -hmm. by brain. Mm -hmm. And then you get caught in a pattern, you're a Brahmin. Yes, I come yeah. from a Brahmin family. You're born as a born Brahmana family. And there's certain traditions, certain superstitions, certain kind of way of living. Probably not too orthodox. Right? Or were they very orthodox? No, they weren't orthodox at all. They were not. So they were more or less stepping out of tradition. Mm -hmm. Then what was their feeling about you? How did they treat you? What was their feeling about you? And your feeling about them? Did they love you? Or just looking after you? You understand what I mean by loving, caring, hugging, putting you on their lap, looking after you, so that you slept properly, that you had the right food, that you had that you did weren't too rough or too gentle, you know, taking care of you greatly. How many sisters and brothers did you have? None. So you're the only child? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so did they spoil you? <laughs> you're asking a different question, sir. I don't know. What? I don't know. <laughs> Well, so I'll answer my question. Because I tell you why it's important. Do you see the importance of it? Mm -hmm. huh? I'm not sure, sir. You, that is, if you are not brought up properly, properly, of course, you go into that what it means to be brought up properly. If you're not brought up properly, <coughs> your life begins to be twisted somewhat, right? Mm -hmm. You either don't, don't care for the world, you follow, you become more and more self-centered, more and more concerned about yourself, your, your happiness, your way of life. You follow, more and more self-interest. <laughs> and when you're quite young, that self-interest isn't too prominent, <laughs> too de defined. <laughs> but as you grow old, it becomes stronger and stronger. Then you assert yourself, or aggressive, or all the rest of it. Right. So I'm asking you, what what was your background? What was your, not only environmentally, but also financially, 
also your relationship with society, how you related to nature, what, when you looked at the trees, what you felt like, when you saw a deer, probably you never saw a tiger. I've seen them, but that's more in why that's part. So, what was your relationship to the whole thing? to the whole of life, to the trees, to the grass, to the flowers, and to your parents. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Isn't that important to find out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for yourself? You, you were talking about Love being that. brought up properly. Properly, I'll tell you what I mean, properly. You had the right number of hours to sleep, mm -hmm. right food, in the sense you were Brahmana, you didn't probably eat meat, probably. Now, of course, all that's blown. Uh, you, you were very clean, kept very clean, right? And your clothes were washed regularly. Mm -hmm. You had clean clothes, and you slept in the right place. Maybe on the floor, but it was clean. Was there say in India, a traditional background, or not at all, or it was become very modernized. If, if one lives in urban India, it's, it's quite modernized. Quite? Modernized, westernized. That means what? Um, Did you eat meat? Well, at times, yes. So, you see what I'm trying to get at? You are understanding? In the old days, say from my father and my they were very strict about it. They never ate meat, fish and so on, never smoked. So the whole tradition is changing tremendously. So in other words, economy is changing. And therefore you are you are forced to accept what everybody is doing. Right? Meat, smoke alcohol, you know, the whole... The clothes you wear. Huh? Like clothes. Everyone, everyone. Mm -hmm. So, is your mind also, your brain also becoming ordinary, like everybody else? Yeah, inquire. I'm, I'm asking you. Don't say yes or no. Find out. Let's inquire. Right? Yes, sir. Is there the cost? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sir, from what you said about being brought up properly. Properly, I explained yes, what you I have mean explained that. that. Yeah. And real affection, real sense of being. You, well, you are young, you must be protected. That you are. Uh, that you learned to be gentle, to be quiet, to have certain modesty. You follow what I mean? The whole of that kind of. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, in that case, sir, I didn't have that. And also I was living in a city. In a city, of course. And I think many of us, probably many of the children nowadays, are in that environment. That's the environment, quite. But all that has made a tremendous impression on you, did it? Or not at all? Yes. Some so, what's your background? You know, sir, what is, what is the condition of your thinking, of your feeling, of your emotions. You understand what I'm talking about? Yes. What, what were they like? What are they like now? And in relation to the past, of course, what you are now is what has been, right? Right? Mm -hmm. So what, what were you like? And what are you now? You can't be something totally different now from what yes. you be, right? So trace it out from the beginning of you, from the time you remember till now. Trace it out. Take the time. Go into it. Well, I must say it was quite narrow then. My outlook of life was quite narrow. And from what... Are you judging now? From now it was saying it was narrow? 
Well, <laughs> sir, I was in a city, right? Of course. Probably I didn't have much contact with nature, as you so. said. It's quite important. Yes. And also, I was only living with my family. And from what I see of my mother now, I'm sorry to say, but, you know, she, her whole life is to bring us up. And she expects us to look after of her, course, you know, when she's old. Naturally. Probably whole of the East, hmm? uh, Asia, there is no social security. Mm-hmm. There is no social security. Therefore, the sons have to look after the mother. Therefore, they have to have several children. Yes. And so on. You tell me, you talk to me. You well, keep quiet. Don't you? I can remember that when I was young, I wasn't really um, um, thinking about nature, thinking about looking at a tree, or thinking very much. You know, I was just just you were, living you were in the country. No, I was started in, in Paris. No, but I, I wanted to go further back. Hmm? Uh, when were you studying in Paris? At what age? Well, I was born in Paris until I was, and then I stayed until I was seven. In Paris. Yes. That means. What happened in Paris to you during your seven years? Well, you see, I won't. Please understand what I'm trying. Trace it out. Think it out. Look at it. As though you're looking at a picture which is yourself, you understand? Mm-hmm. At a, a series of movements, series of actions, series of feelings, all that has led you up to now, right? You might love, might want to talk about it. That I understand. No. You understand what I'm trying to say? Alice, talk to me. Go on. Mm. Well, well, I went to an ordinary school in Delhi. Yes. Where you had, say, 25, 30 students in a class, and the mm. teacher would write something on the blackboard. But yes. before that, I'm asking you. Well, I went to school at the age of two. <laughs> Huh? I went to school at the age of two. Good Lord. Indian children are sent to at school. At the age of two? Two or three, yes. What? Find out. You see, you're not inquiring. At the age of two? That I can hardly believe. Yes. To nursery school. To nursery school? Mm-hmm. Well, nursery school, you just play with ch- other children. I understand. Not school, then. It was really kindergarten. Well, you, you learned yeah. alphabets and numbers. Crash. I mean, you know. No, you, well, you learned your alphabets and numbers, then. So, what, as you grew up, hmm? mm-hmm. trace it out. I can't repeat this over and over. Trace it out. Trace the whole thing from the, as for, when you begin to remember, Till now, so that you you are very clear for yourself. You might want to talk about it. I understand, mm-hmm. but if you say sorry, I won't talk about it. It's all right. But if you want to go into it, either you express it, put it into words to convey to others, or you are tracing it out in your own. You follow, and you may not want to talk. So it's, it's, I think it's easy to tell you what happened, but it's difficult to say what one felt when one was young. Uh, mm-hmm. right. It's very difficult to say so how I felt about right. my parents. I understand that. Now, tell me a little more. I, I don't know how to proceed. Do you want to know what happened? Yes. <laughs> what happened? Say, for instance, when you were five, hmm? mm-hmm. you remember when you were five. Mm-hmm. Then from that age till twelve, right? Mm-hmm. Seven years. What what was your thinking about? What was your feeling about others or about your father and mother? I can remember that 
I was mainly thinking about going to school and you know um, not liking school very much and but um mainly there were my parents telling me the things I should do and the things I shouldn't do and the school also at school the so teachers oh, I'm pushing you <laughs> well I remember I was in well I was in a Catholic school run by priests. Uh, Where? In, no, in Bulgaria? No, it's in, in, in the northwest of Argentina. Gide. Hmm? Tell me where. Well, the city is called Tucuman. Yes, Tucuman, hmm. I know. It's next to the mountains. Yes. And I was in a, well, in this school run by priests. And Yes, I remember I was quite influenced by what they you, they said, and sometimes I used to to feel very scared when when they talk and they said that if I lied I would go to hell or things like that, you know. But on the other hand, at, at home my father usually said that all what priests said were, was rubbish, and then then sometimes I paid attention to the priest, sometimes I paid attention to my father. <laughs> <laughs>